Hello and welcome to my gear room slash workshop. Uh, I made a previously a video already about restoring builders X, but uh, I had a accident. I was removing from my Chromecast playlist video, uh, and uh, I did push remove, and it deleted my whole video. So I'm really sorry about you guys. There was nice comments. A lot of views already, and now it's destroyed forever. But uh, I can make you a new video, because now I have uh, much more things to tell, actually. So I was fixing this Bilnes X last time, and now it's a little bit more uh, uh, advanced. I have some later works done here. But as last time, I was telling you about the Bilnes. It's a Finnish. Uh, Ironworks, and uh, they they have been making it, the Ironworks almost 400 years. I have something here in the paper that I don't miss up mess up the dates again. So it was established in uh, 1641, and uh, the factories were bought by Fiskars. You maybe know the famous Finnish brand, they are making scissors uh, and axes still and uh, <laughs> actually I have one Fiskars axe here also somebody can remem remember this small handy axe and some Canadians call this the hateful Fiskars because it's not wooden shaft anymore ok but sorry about that, let's continue and uh, the most common model they made is actually this uh, models, model 12 and they have this in three different sizes as uh, some, uh, some of the other axes also but uh, this was uh, like a general use axe this was used for uh, uh, cutting down a tree all the labor phases during after that and actually also splitting the wood and in 1946 we had a like an association who was uh, it was uh, telling uh, what's the best tools and this was chosen by the their recommended axe for almost everything and uh, this axe has been manufactured from the uh, 19, how you say it, uh, from the 18th century. So in early 1019 something. Uh, we tell the years indifferently in Finnish, so sorry I'm <laughs> confusing about those still. And in 1960s, Fiskars did buy this, or the 57, and they still had the same name. But they did change the number quite fast, and I have actually one of a uh, few of those axes. Sorry, guys, I have. Okay, for example, this one. This is billed as 1122. So actually, they did put one more um, number, the number one, in front of the number, and they removed the dot. So this is actually 12.2 ax from the old numbers. And they did change this model a little bit uh, later also. And uh, in 1970 they did remove that model completely from there from their list. So there's a little bit history you about the axis and uh, I have this Bilnes 12 series axis, a lot of these and I can tell you that in Finland you can find these old axes for from uh, every farmhouse almost and uh, in flea markets and uh, I go to the local flea markets and I, I have been found like almost 30 axe heads usually the shaft is broken and it's really rusty 
and uh, you have to sharpen the edge, remove the rust, make a new shaft. And uh, they didn't have any sheet, so I have made these sheets for this axis because you know I'm from the hike hiking background, so I like to use this axe sometimes in the hiking trip also. So it's a sharp blade, it's good to have it uh, secured with the sheet. And uh, yeah, the price usually in the flea markets it could be like 2 euros, 5 euros. They are like, somebody said in the old video comment, it's like coffee money. And uh, also people throw these away. It's really shame because it's a beautiful axe. And for my opinion also, this is one of the best multi-purpose axes you can find. A lot of people use these these days like a bush crafting axe and uh, also a hiking axe and uh, it has been now really popular in Finland also and people are restoring these uh, included me uh, it's a really nice hobby to find these beautiful axe heads and restore their beauty and uh, what's the most uh, beautiful thing you can take it back to action and actually use it and not just put it in put it in the wall and uh, yeah, it's a vintage axe. I think this is maybe in the 1940 made. And uh, it's so big part of Finnish history. If you know about Finnish history, we are practically from the woods. And uh, cutting down the woods has been really important for us, for economical. And uh, also we had a really strong culture. Uh, about being outdoors, hunting, fishing, and this is a huge part of it. And uh, the whole Finnish Finland is uh, actually built with these axes. So that's why I love this also. I really love this. So I made a actually <laughs> new axe holder. I can show it to you. So I have here now is 13 axes with, uh, with the shaft and also I have under this nice thingy I have here 13 more axe heads so as I said I, I can have almost 30 axes vintage axes okay here is some uh, new versions also but you have nice collections also I'm making knives so I have a lot of knives here we call this Puukko it's a Finnish model of knife and uh, uh, if I have to be honest I'm not really making the knife I buy the blade but then I uh, put it all together and make the sheet but I'm, I'm not making any uh, Black, blacksmith job because I don't have any skills for that or the place either but here here are my axes okay this is really interesting you can find this catalog from uh, internet also I can provide you a link for it in the description of the video but this is uh, Bilnes catalog from 1928 actually it's uh, 82 pages I didn't print those all but I did print the axes so you can have here for example it starts from the number one and uh, you can always find the model number and then there is the weight and some of the axes, like here is the first, it is the number five. There's a two different sizes of the axe. All these axes are for different purpose. And there's a lot of these. Here is the model 12, what I was talking about. And uh, you can find it's in uh, three different sizes. There's 12.1, it's the heaviest one. And I can find here that it's the axe head is uh, 
1.6 kilos, 12.2 is uh, 1.4 kilos, and 12.3 is 1.1 kilos. And also you can find the blade, they're measuring how wide is the blade from the cutting ed edge. So 12.1 and 12.2 is 105 millimeters and 12.3 is 19, 90 millimeters when it's new. So here is also some, uh, I think these are mostly splitting axes and they are actually here you can read that they are making from America. So maybe they were selling these to America. United States and Canada and these uh, axe heads are for cutting down the trees here is we call peel and it's meant for uh, making for example a timber house a log house you're uh, cutting the side of the log from these making it uh, like more like uh, uh, how you know you know what I mean and more of those and more feel and this is a record axe and a little Norwegian style actually they made those also and here they had a Russian style of axe here is hand axes and uh, this is axe where you make the joint for the log house i think and they made a, this is vesuri i have actually one of those also but it's not vilnes uh, i can't really know what this is meant for maybe somebody can say and then there is uh, axe for chopping uh, pine tree stuff there's actually meat axe and a fireman axe and uh, here's some more, more smaller ones so actually in this point already there is over 60 different models and some models have uh, three different sizes also and they are wedges so they had a really big selection of axes in 1928 too bad that they don't have the prices here would be nice to see the prices also my new hobby uh, fixing the axes is really great I think I'm going to save most of these axes for me I would love to have all the models, but as you say, so it has uh, over 60 different models and the sub models under those. So it's like having 100 axes. Uh, I can never find those. Some of those are so difficult to find. But uh, I can al always try to find as many axes as possible. And. Uh, it would be nice to have a nice collection of axes and I also love the Swedish axes and uh, I actually went went this summer to the Grand Forsbrook, Sweden and uh, I bought this small forest axe I love this also really nice they still make these beautiful axes and this is maybe the most popular in bushcrafting things and I love this axe it's really good I have nothing bad to say about this axe but I like more the Finnish axe when there's it's a little bit heavier so you can have more force but of course when you're hiking you actually it's really rare I actually carry an axe some of the shorter trips maybe and uh, in the winter time yeah but uh, it's quite rare to have an axe in hiking trips 
But I can show you a little bit how I restore an axe. I can show you the old video of, of the first first axe I did fix. This one. And uh, mm, maybe later I can show you the whole deal. I have learned so much more after I made this one. So maybe later you can see a video where I make really nicer work.
Okay, here it is. I feel that I have in my hand the biggest art artifact Finnish people have ever made. I think this is the best design we have ever made. Uh, I feel like a little bit sent uh, sentimental here. Uh, I have a dust in my eye. <laughs> but yes, I respect the, the most important people for me, what I feel is the people who were working in the forest, in the forest companies. They were, they were the people who made fin Finland the country it's today. And we have everything we have to have these days. In every meter we are one of the best world in, fin in the whole world. And I have to say thanks for the people who built it. We had a strong economy from the forest paper factories and stuff like that. I have been saying that we have to now protect more the forest, but in these day, those days they made the right decision, decision and uh, they made a really strong country for us to live here. And uh, this product is one of the main products what they use there in the forest. This is made in the Bilnes Ironworks it's almost 400 years old uh, ironworks and uh, it's in the river Mustio. I have been paddling there also. It's still there and they started to make this this axe in, uh, in the early 1900 and they made it all to the 1960s and after that there was other company who bought the Vilnes Fiskars and uh, then they made this model 10 years to the 1970s and then they did stop to manufacture this. So this I can see the stamp here it's 12.3 so this is made uh, before the 1960s I think it's made in the 50s maybe I think they had a little break in the Second World War. We had a war against the Russia or the Soviet Union and uh, they had a small break there but they continued to manufacture these after the war. And uh, there is three models of this. I have the bigger one also. It's the 12.1 is the biggest. 12.2 is the medium size and this is Film point three, so this is the smallest one, and this is suitable for hiking axe. And we have a lot of these in Finland. I think everybody can remember this axe from the childhood. Uh, in my my generation, everybody has seen this and maybe even used this one. The twelve point two as the axe they used in the the forest, like fifty years, sixty years. And it was the best axe you could have. And it was so expensive that usually a uh, worker had uh, only one axe. And uh, that that's why I feel really proud to have one axe. I don't know if I did so good work to restore this. But uh, I think I saved one axe and I'm going to use this. There's actually no need to test this because they have this testing this acts like 60 years so it's definitely working I can say you that usually they don't have these holes for the uh, screws here and it's not necessary uh, I could feel when I did broke these that it's when you make this r right way it's not never going to, going to lose it but because there was the holes I wanted to put something there and uh, I did sandpaper this, usually you don't sandpaper, but it was too slippery. I used the number 40 sandpaper and now it's really good. But I know there is some grease going off your hands and it's going to the wood and after using it sometimes it gets slippery again. And uh, I did uh, sharpen this a little bit. It's not as sharp as I could take my 
uh, hair out of my hand. And there is a reason. I think I heard Lars Monson said that before he goes hiking, he hits the axe in the stone a little bit, that it's not too sharp. And the reason is that when you're hiking uh, long distances, you're really tired. If you're just bushcrafting, walking a few kilometers to the forest and have a camp there, you're not so tired and you can have a sharp axe. Or if you want to use it like a knife, it should be sharp. But if you use that just split wood and stuff like that, when you're really tired and when you're in the forest, you have a difficult place to split the wood and the accident comes really easily when you're tired. So if this is like a ninja sword, it's going to split my fingers off. But when it's a little bit and it makes the cuts here really easy. Uh, I didn't sharpen it too much, so now it's, I think it's good. But I have to test my sharpening. And uh, there's also a trick here, when you sharpen this, you want this profile to be a little bit rounded. Uh, it also depends what you're going to do with the axe. But I'm not expert of doing that, so I'm not going to tell you anymore. Now I just want to get outdoors and test this beauty. I have to say that every time I use it, I remember the guys who built Finland. And uh, it was really hard work. They usually died young. They had a lot of accidents. And they were working almost every day where when was the time to go to the forest. Usually they cut down the trees in the winter time when the trees dry. And in the east Finland and the north there is was like one meter snow and they didn't have much to eat, just fat, some kind of bread maybe, butter and uh, yeah really tough work, not so good diet, and they usually had a heart problems and died young. So I can feel them every time I use that axe. Thank you for watching.